Hey everybody, my name is Chloe and because I have a lot to get into today with Abraham Lincoln, we're just going to jump right into it. This will be two different videos and I decided to do it on two separate days to give you guys time to absorb all this information that I'm about to tell you. So today we're talking about the 16th president who was Abraham Lincoln, served from 1861 to 1865. Uh, this first video, his, his vice president was Hannibal Hamlin. Here is a picture of Abraham Lincoln. Of course, we all know what he looks like. Okay, so February 7th, 1861, the Confederate States of America was formed. It was organized by the southern states from South Carolina to Texas. Jefferson Davis was elected the president, and he was from Mississippi. So he was the president for the... Confederate States, which was the Southern States. March 4, 1861, Lincoln was inaugurated, nation's first Republican president. Uh, between the election and the inauguration, seven states seceded in, in the South, becoming the Confederates. Um, I just want to make a side note, I didn't do any information on Jefferson Davis, so if you want me to, Leave a comment below and I can try and look him up and see. I mean, it would be the same information anyway, so because it was during Lincoln's time in office. So a lot of his stuff is actually in here anyway. Okay, keep going. March 11th, 1861, the Confederate Congress adopts the Constitution. It declares sovereignty of states and forbids any bill to pass that outlaws slavery. April 12, 1861, Fort Sumter. Lincoln attempts to resupply Fort Sumter. Under the command of General P.G.T. Beauregard, the South fires on, on the federal arsenal in Charleston Harbor at 4.30 in the morning. President Davis issues the order, and that was the start of the Civil War. Now hold on to your hats here, because uh, that's not the official start of the Civil War, apparently. April 13, 1861, Mayor Anderson surrenders. After 33 hours and out of supplies, Major Robert Anderson surrenders. Uh, the federal outpost was evacuated the following day. April 15, 1861, Lincoln calls for an end of the rebellion. After Fort Sumter, Lincoln calls up 75,000 volunteer militiamen declaring an insurrection. This marks the official start to the Civil War. So two days, three days later. In four and a half years, nearly five million men served and more than 600,000 died. And it was the bloodiest war in American history. April 17, 1861, Virginia secedes. Also, North Carolina, Tennessee, and Arkansas follow suit after Virginia secedes. So it separates and becomes part of the, the Confederates. April 19, 1861, Lincoln orders a blockage. Only 42 ships and 3,550 miles of Confederate coastline was patrolled. Lincoln blocks the ports, disrupting importing supplies. The first casualties occur in Baltimore, Maryland. May 6, 1861, Arkansas, Arkansas secedes from the Union. Did I say that already? Yeah. So they seceded on May 6. May 10, 1861, the Morrill tar Tariff, M O R R I L L Tariff. Sponsored by Senator Morrill of U uh, Vermont, the House of Representatives passes the tariff and Excise, excise taxes. May 20th, 1861, North Carolina secedes from the Union. So this is where those other states followed suit. May 21st, 1861, Confederate capital moves to Richmond, Virginia. June 8th, 1861, Tennessee secedes from the Union. July 21st, 1861, the Battle of Bull Run. It takes place near Manassas, Virginia. Confederate General Beauregard defeats the Union forces under General Irvin McDowell. <clears throat> Excuse me, dry throat. General Thomas J. Jackson is known as Stonewall Jackson. So that's where he comes into it. I had heard about him, but I didn't know his story. So Confederate flag is, is changed. 
Okay, so remember when I talked yesterday about the Confederate flag uh, had to change from the stars and bars because it was too close to the Union flag? Well, I am going to show you a picture. Oops. If I could spell. Stars. Okay. And. Okay, so the first Confederate flag actually looked like that as compared to what we all know today as the Confederate flag. And that was very close to the Union flag. Um, so I'll show you what the Union flag looked like. I'm trying to be real quick here because I don't want to go over my minutes. Um, Union flag. Okay, I'm going to put Civil War in here because otherwise it'll just give me the British flag. Okay, so I don't think that's the right one. Hmm. Actually, it might be. Don't quote me if I'm not right on this, but when I pull it up, this one, this... Okay, <laughs> it's on Amazon. It's for sale on Amazon. Um, Civil War flag of the United States. This might be the Union flag, so you can see how it was kind of close to the to the Confederate flag, the original Confederate flag. So then the Confederate flag changed to what we know it as today. Okay, so where was I? Okay, July 25th, 1861, Union endorses volunteers, offers a $100 bonus for two years of service. September 14th, 1861, the naval engagement at Pensacola, Florida. Between the U.S., it was between the USS Colorado and the steamer Judah. Yeah. October 31st, 1861, General Winfield Scott retires. He was the commander-in-chief of the Union Army, and he retired at the age of 75. November 1st, 1861, McClellan named commander. From West Point, he replaces Scott because he was too cautious, but because he was too cautious, Lincoln eventually replaces him, so that's coming up too. February 20th, 1862, William Wallace, Willie, Lincoln died. Uh, he had typhoid fever, and he was the second son that Lincoln had lost. March 9th, 1862, the Ironclad Warfare. It was the first warship duel. The Confederacy converts the wooden Merrimack into an Ironclad gunship and changes the name to Virginia. So it was originally called the Merrimack and then they changed it to Virginia. The Union Monitor battles Virginia in a standoff and the Union wins that standoff. April 16th, 1862, slavery is abolished in D.C. June 1st, 1862, General Robert E. Lee appointed the commander. Uh, he was appointed uh, uh, the commander of the Confederate Army. And the, uh, because his predecessor was, was wounded. Now, a little interesting fact about Robert E. Lee. Neil Diamond actually wrote a song, and I'm guessing that the Robert E. Lee eventually became a boat or a ship or something, but um, Neil Diamond wrote a song called On the Robert E. Lee, and it was used in the movie that he starred in with Laurence Olivier called um, The Jazz Singer, and it's not the one from the 1930s, it's a newer one. Um, and it also star starred Luce Lucy Arnaz, who was Lucille Ball's daughter. So check that out. Um, you can um, look, that, look the song up on, on YouTube uh, to hear the song. So July 1st, 1862, organizing the Blast Troops. Major General David Hunter of the Union organizes, I'm sorry, the Black Troops, not Blast. I can't read again. Uh, okay, the first Black Troops. Many former, many of them were former slaves. Now, please don't get mad at me for saying the word black instead of African American. Um, I mean no disrespect to anybody that's watching that may be African American. It's just the way I grew up. We, 
you were white, Hispanic, or black. So, I mean, no disrespect to you. It's just the way it is. I am not racist in any way, shape, or form. It's just the way I wrote this down. So, and the way it was on the website. Nearly 200,000 blacks served in the Union. 10% of, that was 10% of the total manpower. The Confederates vowed to execute all captured black soldiers. But Lincoln counters that and vows to kill any Confederate who kills a, for every black soldier that they, or black, yeah, for every black soldier that the Confederate kills, Lincoln vows to kill the, the Confederate soldier, or a Confederate soldier. July 22nd, 1862, Lincoln's intentions. This is when he announces to the cabinet about the Emancipation Proclamation. We'll get into that later. August 29th, 1862, the Second Battle of Bull Run. General Stonewall Jackson and, and Robert E. Lee proved too much for the Union troops under General John Pope, and they, um, they retreated to uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, September 17th, 1862, the Battle of, okay, let's see if I can pronounce this, Antietam, Antietam, I'm just going to spell it because I don't know how to say it. A-N-T-I-E-T-A-N. -E Creek. And that's near Sharpsburg, Maryland. It was the bloodiest one-day engagement. General Lee invades the north and is thwarted by General McClellan. 5,000 people were killed. 18,000 were wounded. Lincoln removes McClellan at that time. September 22, 1862, the Emancipation Proclamation. It goes into effect on January 1st of 1863, which we will get into to, in tomorrow's video. Lincoln frees all the slaves in the Confederate, and non-Confederate slaves are excluded. So I'll go into more detail about that tomorrow, because there was more information about that later on. November 1st, 1862, the midterm congressional elections. Republicans hold the House of Representatives and the Senate. 39 to 17 in the set and 17? 12, I think. I think that's a 12. 39 to 12 in the Senate and 103 to 80 in the House. December 13, 1862, the Battle of Fredericksburg. In its Fredericksburg, Virginia, uh, it was a grave defeat for the Union. Excuse me. General Lee defeats General Burnside. And the Union loses 12,600 men, while the Confederates lose 5,300 men. December 31st, 1862, the Union Ironclad, Ironclad Monitor sinks. Uh, that was the one that was renamed the Virginia, sinks off of Cape Hatteras in North Carolina. So that brings us to the end of half of uh, Lincoln's term in office. Um, for those of you, just to kind of give you an indication of what's coming up tomorrow, he was elected president for a second term, but it was during that term, and if any of you know this, uh, or don't know this, I uh, don't know where you've been living, but um, he was assassinated during his second term, four months after he was inaugurated, or uh, a month after he was inaugurated. Uh, it was in April of 1965 or 1865 that he was assassinated so he had just started his second term so that's why I say he was basically a one-term president uh, because he was assassinated so shortly after he became president for the second term so tomorrow I already have it everything written down here uh, my hand is killing me from yesterday when I did that or two days ago um, maybe it was yesterday I don't know but he, Lincoln did a lot. I mean, a lot happened, excuse me, during Lincoln's time because it was all during the Civil War. Uh, the Civil War started and ended during Lincoln's four years. So um, we'll go into more detail about um, the collapse of the, of the Civil Union, or the, yeah, the, the Civil War, Civil Union, um, and move into Lincoln's death tomorrow. I know, Star Shadow, you said you wanted me to do it uh, in one day, but it's just too much to go through. So I'm going to do part two of Abraham Lincoln tomorrow. So come back tomorrow to learn about what happened from 1863 to 1865.
the end of the Civil War, how things happened. Um, there was very little else that happened. It was basically just all about the Civil War and slavery and, um, and all that. So come back tomorrow for the second half of Abraham Lincoln. I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. So that'll be the last day of the year for those of you that are watching on time. And uh, please, please, please leave your comments below. I've been seeing that a lot of people are watching, but nobody's commenting except for Star Shadows. So I need you guys to comment and let me know who's watching these, how you like them, how you, you know, what you like about them, what you dislike about them. Um, if you think it's a good idea, I've been told by many people that it is a good idea because apparently in schools nowadays, they don't even teach about the president. So I'm kind of glad that they decided to do that. So thanks to Lynn manuel and his play of Hamilton. So I'll see you guys tomorrow for Abraham Lincoln, part two, end of the Civil War. You guys have a sunny day. Class dismissed.